Hey, what's up, you guys? It is your host, Moise Petran, the Roll the Villains podcast. Now, you know, as an entrepreneur, a lot of us, we fall victim to society's measures and, and perspectives, right? We let outside thinking do the thinking for us, majority of the time. And that's a bad thing because we're letting ourselves be dictated by other people's opinion. And that's the same thing why I got into entrepreneurship. That's one of the reasons why I continue to be entrepreneurs because I like to defy the odds. And pretty much what I'm just talking about today is real estate. You know, this quote unquote real estate crash that's supposed to be coming 2020, 2024. And what do I mean by this, you know, quote unquote, because it may be a crash, it may not be a crash, but as a real estate investor, your main concern is how could you position yourself to win? You know, because if you keep thinking about what everybody else is doing, you're never going to find the opportunity that presents itself to you. Because as a lot of people may know, and a lot of people may not know, opportunity is present in chaos. That's when the best type of opportunity comes. So a lot of people may not understand this moving forward, that real estate goes up and down. You know, it's like the stock market. It goes up, stays up for a little bit, then it crashes and it goes down. And in the past, you know, it's been trends about real estate going up and down. But as a real estate investor, you want to think about what is your goals? What are you trying to get into? What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to be a fixed and flipper? Because obviously that's going to be determined on the market. Are you going to be a long-term hold? Because are you going to are you going to be a long-term hold and hold off on fixing and flipping? I mean, flipping that property and using it for long-term income because then again, you won't be affected, quote unquote, by the market. Yes, your housing price and valuation will go down. But if you're not looking to pull any equity out or refinance anytime soon, your main concern is how much more could you get in rent than, you know, the house is actually mortgaged at. So I like to tell all my mentees a simple thing. I like to tell them two things. When you're working on deals that may seem too out of reach or the numbers may seem too astronomical, break it down a little bit because we think too much about what's going to happen in the next 6, 12, 18 months. You got to think about what's happening now. You know, we only have to deal with 2023. For the rest of the year, that's all That's all we have to left to do. And yes, you want to put yourself in position for 2024, but you also want to think about what goals are you going into 2024 that's going to, that's going to keep you from making mistakes, right? A lot of people make mistakes. You know, some deals I had that I lost money on. It's not going to say I could see it coming because no one, no one is going to sit here and be like, oh, I want to lose some money. I see it coming. Let me still do it. No, it's all about perspective. I think this deal is going to go really well, and it does bad. Like the same thing, like I said, with the stock market, it goes up. No one knows when it's going to crash. It just automatically does out of nowhere. So same thing goes to real estate, but we have different sectors in real estate. You know, you have developers, you have investors, because developers could be investors, but sometimes developers are just developers. You have investors who solely just invest in real estate. You have realtors who obviously are affected by the market. If no one's buying houses, no one's selling the houses, no one's making money. And also you have contractors who's working on these houses, who's rehabbing these houses. So all these people are your team players, right? And um, as an investor, you want to think about how are you going to position yourself to win? You want to have a great relationship with your realtor. And your realtor is going to be one of the main ones who tells you about these deals, who gives you the advice about what's going on in that particular market. I'm not talking about worldwide, that particular market. And a great investor, you know, always told me, listen, man, if you really want to be a great investor, focus on one market, one niche, one area, expand that and scale it and go crazy. A lot of people, they're contradicted by what's going on in Cali, what's going on in Florida, what's going on in Texas, what's going on in New York. But you're, you're stationed here in Georgia. Why are you worrying about everybody else? And that's because a lot of people, social media and worldwide news can make people really um, fearful. You know, they don't want to you know, jump out there and actually invest in real estate because a crash is coming, but you don't even know about real estate. You don't even know about the different exit strategies they are, although people may tell you it's going to crash. So you're telling me no one's going to buy real estate up until today, all the way till whenever the crash is supposed to be supposed to come and happen? No, that's nonsense. People are still continually going to buy. We have many examples where you have Bitcoin at one point was the people's coin, Right. And only the people were able to use it and really push for it. And now the government is pushing for it. That's the same thing I tell you guys, perspective. If everybody starts pushing a movement, everybody's going to follow it. And once everybody's saying a real estate crash is going to come, a real estate crash is going to come, in, that's cool. But you still have people who have millions and hundreds of thousands of dollars who have money to play with. They don't need to go get a mortgage. You know, They don't need to go get a loan on their house because they already are prepared. And for these people, they'll own, the only thing they're worried about is getting these deals at a cheap and affordable pr- price lower than the market rent, 
lower than the market price. And, you know, they, they're ready. You know, they know they're going to buy a house for 100000 put thirty into it. They know they're not going to go too crazy because they have a loan. They don't have a loan on it. They're going to sell it for $180,000, 200000 get in, get out. They're not looking for this crazy return because they have an action plan. They have a value. They have um, a vision. And as an investor, you want to think about the same thing. You don't want people to um, undermine your intelligence because if you know the information, you know the area, you know how things already been working out for you in the past, why would you let everybody else's opinion affect you? You know, you have mortgage lenders telling you, hey, the rate is going crazy right now. But if you're not living in a house and you're a real estate investor, particularly this is this is for real estate investors, all you have to worry about is the mortgage, insurance payment, and taxes per, per month. And after that, all you got to do is worry about is how much is the tenant going to be paying in rent. Boom, boom, boom. You're not worrying about, oh, shit, I got to hurry and go do this and then that. No, you don't got to worry about that because you already set your prices up in stone, you know. For the people who are saying a real estate crash is coming, like I mentioned before, it may come. It may come. It may never come. But your whole proposition is, are you going to wait around for it to come? And once you keep waiting around for things, like I see, like I've seen before, like I preached before as an entrepreneur, you got to be on your toes. You got to be working. You got to be grinding. And a lot of people, they fall victim to this waiting. You know, you're waiting for the opportunity. And opportunity comes for those who actually go look for it. Opportunity comes to those who um, actively are always in pursuit of searching for it. You know, money, you know, investments that are going to make you lucrative is not going to provide you the opportunity to, like, see it if you're not out there trying to really get to it, if you're not out there trying to search through the, all the trash and the rumble and, um, you know, quieting the noise, you know, because the noise is real estate is going to crash, real estate is going to crash. You know, the average mortgage now is two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000, but... I try, I try to teach, teach my mentees that your main concern is how much the mortgage is, how much is the house. Are you able to refinance out three to six months um, before a year? Yes, you could do that. You could even flip it for that price, you know, around um, income tax. You know, a lot of people are getting their income tax. These things don't slow down, people, because there are some people who their whole ideal is I'm going to use my first time's home buyer um, program, FHA, to buy, to buy a house. So that person might buy your house. And there's thousands and hundreds of people who have these things. So when we talk about a real estate crash is coming, we really got to think about the common sense that's, that's, that's affecting everybody. Why is it coming and why is there a crash? Well, there is a crash because so many houses are priced too high. And this, this population and um, this, this Gen Z that we have about us, I mean, I say Gen Z, we have this Gen Z, you know, we're in, quote unquote, we can't afford it. And, um... I'm here to tell you that shit is expensive. It is de- it's definitely expensive. But as an investor, your main concern is how could you make money with with everybody not buying right now? If no one's buying right now, what's going on with the rent? What's going on with the rent? It's going up, right? So at the end of the day, I just want you guys to understand, like, the real estate market is only for those who actually want to get into it and experience all the good, bad, and the ugly. You know, you're going to make some money, you're going to make some, you're going you're gonna to take some L's. But you can't say you want to be a real estate investor if you don't want to see the overall scope of it. You know, yes, there could be a potential crash. Are you afraid? It's okay to be a little bit nervous. But why is that paralyzing you from actually purchasing your first apartment, your first duplex, your first single family home, throwing it on Section 8, what I tell everybody all the time that I do. I don't ever, ever do nothing else. I don't tell people I rent it out to no normal folks. Section 8, I get it on a governmental contract. I have them folks pay me every month on the first. I don't have no. I don't have to worry about running after tenants and you ain't paid. You ain't paid. I don't got to worry about it. You know, it's going to come. And if anything, they're going to give you a little bonus. You know, so shout out to everybody who actually is in real estate because we're focused on the bigger picture. We're not focused on the noise. And as a real estate investor and as someone who wants to get into real estate, your main concern is not listening to everybody who's telling you what's going on. You know, you have people who have buku amount of money. They could be spreading false marketing um, information in order to lower the prices at home to force people to sell. Because obviously, if you can't refinance out of your loan, you have to bring money to your closing. That's going to be another conversation. But the whole thing is, let's get everybody scared. Let's get everybody ran, ranted up. And everybody's going to start selling 20, 30, 40 K less. And then we're going to jack it back up and we're going to buy all these houses up in the same neighborhood, tear it down. You should have just held on to your house a little bit longer and make it over this little quote-unquote propaganda. Um, honestly, I was never around, you feel me, in real estate to experience a real estate crash. You know, last time we had a crash was 2008. 
So, you know, a lot of people always have fears about people having it all and losing it all. But I look at it like if you really want to think about the basics of real estate, are you able to pay your mortgage? Are you able to cover your utilities? And as an investor, is your tenants paying the mortgage? And how much money are you making on top of that? And once you have those things set up, that's all you have to do. But you're listening. You're watching what everybody else is doing. You're seeing what everybody else is doing. And um, you want to team up with the people who aren't affected by this controversial um, talk about real estate crash. Because I just met a guy yesterday, two days ago, like two, three days ago at Home Depot named Paul. Paul was a cool dude. Paul's a contractor. And he told me, listen, man, I just bought three houses over the last eight months. And I was like, damn, you know, how you feel about this quote unquote crash going? He was like, man, listen, I know how to fix houses. You know how to fix houses. You know the prices of the houses. You know what's really going on. We have to be able to buy ourselves into these deals and get the best deals right now because people are selling. Imagine if the real estate market is at the top of this market right now. Imagine people saying, hey, if you had a, if you got a house right now, you better sell it and sell it for the highest price because everybody has money right now. The economy is balanced. But now since the economy is crazy right now, you have interest rates out the rate. You got inflation going crazy. You got people who can't really keep up with payments. Now the economy has to back get back stable, you know? And um, doing that, it has to catch up. Middle, ca- middle class has to catch up. And the lower class has to catch up as well in order to make it a balanced field. But they was talking about sooner or later, it's not going to be no more middle and poor class. It's going to be rich and poor, you know, the next few years because the way things are happening now, the way inflation is going on, the way the economy is going, um, a lot more people aren't buying. You know, it's, it's a housing shortage, really, in America. And there's a housing shortage in a lot of these states. But people aren't buying. People are really okay and comfortable with renting. You know, because of renting, I rent and I still have houses. But with renting is, is the comfort of you'll deal with it. You'll deal with the problem. I already paid my money. You already told me what I got to pay per month. You deal with it. You deal with the finances. You deal with the taxes. You deal with all that. And that's what a lot of people are afraid of. They're afraid of them buying a house and they may not be able to afford it. They have to fix all these extra things. But what if you bought a house as a real estate investor? What if you bought the house looking at it as a cash cow instead of a liability? What if you looked at it as an actual asset, which it already is, but not an asset that everybody else knows it as, but an asset to your own pockets, an asset that's going to continue to pay you per month, an asset that's going to take away your worries, an asset that's going to take away you know, the problem of you not having extra money per month coming in because you're already set in stone what you need to do. And this is the asset that's going to pay you for years, 30 years down the line, depending if you ever sell it or not. And then with that asset, you don't got to worry about pulling money out because it's paying you per month with monthly cash flow. The only people who's really worried about this real estate crash is first-time home buyers, you know, because obviously they don't want to overpay for a house that isn't going to be worth 10 or 10, and it's going to be worth 10 to 15, 20% over what they actually put down. You know, if you bought a house for 200 grand and it dropped 165, you just lost a hell of money. You know, that could have been money you pull out because that 200 could have been worth 250 in the same year. But now you're digressing. So a lot of people are afraid of that as well because the mortgage does not change. Um, so does the taxes. You get me? So the whole totality of this conversation is do your research. Don't let people fool you after position. Don't let people um, tell you that something's going to happen and it never does. And don't let people fear you into something that may happen and you just sitting around waiting it, waiting for it to happen. Find your mentor. You know, reach out to me. You know, Billner underscore Moist, Bright Raven Group at Gmail dot com. You know, send me a DM. You know, listen to the podcast to get some advice. But I feel like the biggest thing we as people and as collective has to do is put our head on the swivel. You know, be on my P's and Q's. Be on your P's and Q's. What do you want to accomplish twenty twenty four in real estate? Do you just want to be a wholesaler because you can still make money in anything? You can make money on the sale. You can make money on a profit. You can make money on the bear market. You can make money on a, um, on a bull market. So I just try to take everything in comparison. You know, the financial analysis says you need at least 100 and I think it was 117 per year now to actually afford, afford a, um, a $300,000 house. I think there was something on Instagram. Just, just think about everything you need to do in order to buy yourself. Keep doing what you guys are doing. Um, do your research. Follow me on Instagram, Billner underscore Moist. And then they, I appreciate you guys for listening, watching this YouTube video. I will be dropping more projects and more um, podcast episodes. And, you know, you guys take care. Thank you.